Yeah, so I, I basically, uh, I've been doing sales and in the direct to home market for 15 years. And so I started up a consulting group uh, in the last 18 months. And um, I travel around the country. I, I do a lot of speaking gigs. I train on how to sell solar and I've done very, very well at it. My first three months I sold, or three to four months, I sold 80 accounts uh, straight door to door. And so um, that's predominantly where I have my background. So I've gotten a lot of no's in a short amount of time. And I've learned a lot of things that can really help you guys out. Uh, you don't have to go door to door to learn what I'm about to teach you guys. There's a lot, the, the, the thing is with door to door, you find out very, very quickly what you need to do to improve. And so I've spent most of my life doing it. I made a couple million bucks knocking doors. So it's crazy that that's still possible these days, but it is uh, alive and still a well. And uh, yeah, so now I do a combination of virtual and uh, in-person sales and still knock doors every now and then. But the, the cool part is, is you, there's a lot of principles and underlying themes that you can take from knocking and you know the cool part is i'm going to teach you guys some of them and the stuff that i learned that can help you guys out so you don't necessarily have to go door to door but there's a lot of principles that'll really help you run your business and um let me get some more people in here so um yeah so i'll just kind of dive into it and i'll start sharing my screen and uh we'll go from there so uh, by show of hands who can see what uh everything on my screen right now show hands okay i'm not the best tech guys i usually have a admin handling this stuff for me but um you know she's getting ready for the draft so we're gonna go we're gonna dive right into it so on the door strategy so and, and on the doors or when you're working with your clients this is if you're ever wondering if you're having a good or bad time at the job these are the things that you really have to start looking at it's hours attitude and approach so if you're like, hey, I'm not doing good at this job. Hey, I'm not really being successful at it. These are the three metrics that I found are the most effective to seeing that if they're doing this job correctly or not. And so number one is the hours. And um, hours is really, really important to understand that for me, when I was out knocking or I was making phone calls, I'd spend six to eight hours consistently communicating with clients and talking to homeowners. If you're not spending six to eight hours talking to homeowners, you can't think you're not doing a good job, good, good at this job because think about it this way. You go out, you, you talk maybe for two or three hours the whole week to somebody who, could, who wants solar and then you say, hey, Anthony, I don't know if I'm cut out for this job. Well, unfortunately, Anthony, I'm not, you haven't put in enough time to understand truly if you've done the job or not. So you can't really judge yourself by putting in that amount of time. So you have to spend six to eight hours of uh, six to eight hours a day doing it. That's 40, 50 hours a week. And the thing is, is if you're not counting those hours, you can't even really tell if you've done the job properly because you haven't put enough time in on the, on, at the job. So next is your attitude. Attitude is very, very important to understand that when you're communicating with customers, you're going to get a lot of rejection. So you have to be prepared for that. And your attitude on how you deal with these things is super, super key. So if you're not going into these presentations and you're not going into these um, you know, consultations or you're not cold calling people and you have a bad attitude and you're not mentally psyched up, then you're really not, you're shooting yourself in the foot. And I found that 80% of the transaction with the client is going to depend on your attitude. I'm going to give you a couple of tricks that I've done to help really build my attitude up that you guys can utilize before you start making cold calls or talking into people. But attitude is really, really key on getting that stuff dialed in. And then your approach. Your approach is really, really important because think about this. The first time you drove onto a freeway versus now how you drive onto a freeway. You're not nervous, you're not concerned about it. The same thing with selling. If you knew exactly what to say when the customer said something, you wouldn't be nervous anymore. You would be very comfortable and you'd be continuing going through the motions. It's the same thing when you're talking and selling is you gotta know what your approach is. So you gotta have a script dialed in so that when someone wakes you up in the middle of the night, you know exactly what to say and when to say it. They give you an objection, you have to know exactly how to overcome it. You need to have three different ways to overcome every single objection. You got to think of this as a sport. So many people look at this as just a pat as, as a hobby or something that's fun, but this is literally a professional support, uh, sport. And you got to really know when these guys are hitting you with different objections and different problems, you got to know like the back of your hand, how your approach is and how you're going to handle it. Because guess what? 
The customer who's trained and, and knows salesmen, they'll know if you have your stuff together. They'll know if you're a mess or not. So make sure you really, really dial in your approach because that's the key to being really successful at this is knowing like the back of your hand, everything that you're going to say front and back. So let's dial in. How to get your mindset right. Attitude is the key to this job. Enthusiasm is contagious. The depth of your conviction is more powerful than the peak of your logic. I'll say that again, write it down. The depth of your conviction is more powerful than the peak of your logic. Customers don't care what panels are going on their roof. They don't know about, they don't care about which in phase or whoever the, the product that we're putting on their property. They don't need to know that it's good. They need to know that you know that it's good. And that's the difference is the guys who are sold on what they're doing, they transfer that enthusiasm to the customer and they buy their belief, conviction, and desires. So how to build up that mindset is you have to be able to mentally go through the rejection of this job. And if you're contacting people a lot, you're going to get a lot of rejection. So you have to make sure that your head is in the right space. It's a scary. A lot of times you get shown up, you just get paid an hourly pay, and then you check out. You don't need to have yourself in a motivated state. If you guys are selling solo, you guys understand this is commission only. So you have to get yourself mentally prepared for it. Here's a couple lines that I do to get myself mentally prepared for it. Sales are easy. Guys, we sell a fantastic product. Every single person in the United States will have solar eventually, whether it's by choice or the utility companies are saying, hey, you're going to have to get this. This is easy. This is an easy sale. They're already paying for the utility company. They're already paying a bill. We're just getting something cheaper. We sell a fantastic product and we get paid way too much for saving people money. Next, first comes the action, then comes the motivation. If you're not motivated doing this job, Start doing it, and then the motivation comes. If you're going to wait to get motivated, you're going to be waiting a real long time because that's the thing. You have to make sure that you're fired up and you're ready to go. So you got to go out and take that action. If you're not, that's fine. And understand if you've done this as long as I have, and if you're knocking doors, just think about going out right now and knocking your neighborhood, trying to get someone to buy. You're definitely not going to be motivated. Most people get nervous and like, bro, screw that. Yeah, I did it for most of my life. You got to just get out there and start doing it. So if you're doing calls, you got, you're, you're posting on Facebook, however you get your leads, you just got to start doing it. Start taking the action. Even if you don't feel like doing it, just get after it. That's the key. Next, I like myself. I love my job. I'm constantly repeating to myself. I like myself. I love my job. I like myself. I love my job. I like myself. I love my job. That's the big thing. People can feel that energy. Remember, we talked about it. Sales is a transfer of enthusiasm. So if you can transfer your enthusiasm into your customer, they're going to feel a lot better and they're going to know you feel good. People buy from people who are happy. This is a big thing with this job is make sure that you can feel that. If you've seen somebody that you, a great salesman, remember last time you bought something, usually the guy was happy and had a good time doing it. People can feel that enthusiasm from someone that likes their job. I'm alive. I'm alert. I feel great. I'm alive. I'm alert. I feel great. And you keep saying that. And then all of a sudden your body just starts getting freaking juiced. So that's the thing. I'm alive. I'm alert. I feel great. Consistently saying that to yourself over and over and over again. These are all important to do. Next, they've been talking about already doing this. This is a mindset shift. You got to think people that you're contacting have already thought about getting solar. They just don't trust the last person that they spoke with because the guy didn't have a good attitude. He didn't know what he was talking about, and you do. You've got your stuff dialed in. So make sure that you start telling yourself, oh, man, this next customer I'm going to sit down with, I've got an appointment in two hours. They've already talked about doing it. They want to do it. They just need an excuse with me to get it done. Okay? Next, we get to do this. We don't have to. It's another shift. We don't have to sell solar. We get to. We get to go out and save people money. We get to save the world. We get to talk to people and help them find better ways of getting electricity while meanwhile we get paid. And not only do we get paid, but we save the world too as well. Like we're, we, why, we are so fortunate. Imagine selling, I mean, I did door-to-door -door home security for a long time too as well. That was, man, that's tough. Talking about somebody, oh no, I live in a nice neighborhood. That was hard. This, everybody's already paying for it. We get to do this. This is freaking great. Next. 
get into it. And I think my slides are stuck. There we go. They're lucky to speak to us, not the other way around. Guys, it's seven, eight o'clock at night. These people are so fortunate to speak with people like us because instead of watching Netflix, instead of, you know, going to a bar and getting drunk, we're behind a computer with a pen and paper, taking notes, getting better. People like us change the world. And when we go to talk to clients, and they see the effort and intention that you've put behind getting better, they feel that. People enjoy buying from people who've got their stuff dialed in. Put it this way, if you were to get brain surgery and this brain surgery was the choice of life and death, and you had to pick between two doctors, the doctor that was driving a Lamborghini or a doctor that was driving a Toyota 1992 Toyota Camry, who would you rather get your brain surgery done? Unfortunately, we all know the answer to that. And it's because that's how you have to think when you show up. Even though you don't have the nice car, you don't have the, the, the money just yet, that energy is still transferable. And those are the type of people they want to buy from. So continuing to have that, they're lucky to speak with us. I get off my private jet and go directly into their house or I go directly into that meeting they need to think that I just got off the biggest deal of my life. Hey, I just got done talking with the president. Yeah, we're putting solar panels on the White House. Hold on, I got the Zoom call. Hey, Sharon, nice to talk to you. How you doing? Sorry, I just got done with a pretty big client. Let's hope this one closes. So that energy is just transferable. When you start getting into that client, they feel, whoa, this guy's, this guy's got something going on. He's much different than the last 10 or 15 guys that I met with. Some do, some don't, so what? They sign up, cool. They don't, cool. So what? Doesn't matter. They do, they do, don't, who cares? Some do, some don't, so what? Don't let your highs get too high and your lows get too low. If you celebrate after a win and getting a deal and you go over the top, what happens when that deal cancels? What goes up must come down. Hey, Anthony, I don't think I'm cut out for this job, man. Yeah, it was just too stressful. This solar coaster ain't for me. Don't let your highs get too high, your lows get too low. That's one of the biggest keys. Some do, some don't, so what? That's a phrase that I mentioned. They cancel, some do, some don't, so what? They buy, some do, some don't, don't so what? Very, very key to stay even keeled at this job because you want to make sure that you are on point when you're communicating with these clients and it's when you leave the house and you're not dealing with them is where this mindset has to really kick in because sales is going to be a tough job if you don't learn how to control your emotions and you can't celebrate 24 seven. I set a year long goal to celebrate, not a daily goal, a big goal at the end of the year where I go travel around the country. I go to a charity trip somewhere in South America. And that's, that's my way of celebrating. I don't do it after I get a deal. Hey, that's great. Cool. Just looked at the commission report, close the deal. 12 K sweet. Got it. Next, cool, very, very important. And remember this, he who angers me controls me. He who angers me controls me. If someone can evoke emotion inside of you, they control you. Think about this, when you have talks with your parents and you finally hang out with them and they just do stuff that bugs you and you're 40 years old, 32 years old like me, I went out with my mom the other day and she just knows how to get under my skin. And so it's like, hey, she still controls me because subconsciously, I still remember being a child under her care and all of that. Same thing in, in business. If they do something that angers you, they're in control. Don't let people control you. If someone blows you off, someone cancels an appointment, cancels a deal, who cares? Bad timing. They're lost, not mine. So write these down, guys. These are phrases that you need to have around when you're about to go onto a sales call. If you've got Instagram, Take a picture of this on your story and tag me on your Instagram. These one-liners are going to help you more out than anything else. I'm telling you, this is how you keep your brain in check. This is what goes from doing good to great is all of these different lines that you communicate and talk to yourself. What makes you good versus someone who's average is the way you communicate in your subconscious mind, your internal dialogue. These phrases in your internal dialogue are what's going to help program your subconscious mind to show up more effectively when you start communicating and closing these deals. That's why it's so, so big to do this. 
Remember, affirmation without discipline equals delusion. You say all these things, but you don't make the phone calls. You're delusional. The heck are you doing? It's easy to hide behind a computer screen. We have to get out there and do the work. It's nice to chew the, it's nice to say these fun little phrases, but if we're not putting in the work and we're not cold calling people, we're, we're not putting in the time, we're not doing the work. The formula for getting all, your point across to the customer. Okay, very, very important. You wanna communicate what you're trying to say to your customer, there's a few ways to do it. This is what most salespeople do. You tell them why they should get the product. By show of hands, who's told people before, hey, you should buy solar because of this, 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 and this? I have. We've all done it, right? Okay. That's what most sales reps do. Nicholas has. Thanks for the show of hands. So let's talk about how we can be a little bit more tactful, right? Because there's layers and there's levels of this game. This is one of the most effective ways of getting your, your point across before we get into the most effective is previous customers giving examples on why they got solar. What I like to do is I like to look at my customer's current situation and I think in my Rolodex of customers that closely fit their um, situation, single family, uh, lives a bunch of kids. I try to find previous customers that have been in their situations and I think of all the objections my current customer has and I overcome them through my previous customer. So, hey, Anthony, I understand that you don't like the look of solar. Bo felt the same way. He was a younger guy and he just said, you know what? My curb appeal was super important to him. But the big thing that Bo realized, Anthony, was he didn't like the look of his utility bill either. And he realized, big picture, he doesn't even know what his roof looks like. So what does it matter? He felt it was better to have a zero bill with his solar panels than it was to continue to rent from the utility company and be stuck in a lifelong contract that they could dictate how much it goes up. So Bo was really excited. He just bit the bullet and got it over with because he knows eventually everyone's going to get solar. See, I just told Anthony why he should get solar, but I didn't tell him. I let Bo tell him why Bo got it, and Anthony connects the dots. Okay? Very powerful way of presenting to your clients. Using third-party stories. And if you're new, get testimonies from other guys that work with you. Or continue to use the same customer. If you've got one customer, use that guy's story to everybody. Say the same dang thing. Oh, yeah, Bo said that. Bo doesn't like it either. Oh, Bo was worried about loans. Bo didn't want to take out the debt. Oh, he had all the same objections as you. Here's what Bo found. Doesn't matter. Because what you're doing is you're bypassing the customer's buyer's resistance when you're using third-party stories because it passes that wall of, hey, this guy's trying to sell me something. So remember. Use Bo, use Bo. And if Bo's wife is listening to this, don't use him like that. He's a good man. Don't spend all his money. Wait till his installs hit, then you can. <laughs> okay, next. The customers tell you why they should do it. Have you ever sat down in a presentation and you did an amazing job. And then all of a sudden the customer's like, man, you know what, Danny, this would be really good. You know, this would save me a bunch of money. And they start telling you all these things, right? Well, you got lucky. There's a system to get them to start telling you why they should do it. And I'm going to give you one of the word tracks that I've used to get them to agree with solar. And this is where the money's made right here, ladies and gentlemen. You want to know what's made me a lot of money doing this? It's right here. What are some good customers to tell, or what are some good questions to get your customers to tell you why solar is a good idea? And if you've got good customers, go in the chat right now, and I want you guys to start writing some of the questions you use to get your customers to go solar. And then I'm going to share with you some more tracks that I use, and we can compare and contrast. Okay. First one. I was picking on Bo, so I'll give him a break. Richard, let me ask you a question. Do you know how old the grid is, the grid that gets the power from the power plant to your house? No idea. Okay, 
It's 130 years old. Most people didn't even realize that. Now, Richard, anything over 100 years old, do you know how much it costs? You know how much money it costs to maintain something that old? Well, it's a lot. And let me ask you this, Richard. Who do you think's paying to maintain it? The utility company and the CEO and all the stockholders or the customers? Ah, Richard, you're smart. High five. Way to go. Exactly. Given the cost of inflation and all the prices and everything in today's society, do you see your bill going up or down for your utility bill? Oh, my gosh. Richard, you're making a lot of sense, man. You're selling me on it. Now, this is where you get them, guys. This is where you hook them. Remember, we want to bypass that buyer's defense mechanism. So this is a story. If the, Richard, let's say the utility company knocked on your door and gave you the option to lock in your payments for the next 25 years and never raise your bill. And when you're done, they would drop the payment completely. As long as you paid on time. What would you tell the utility company to that new plan? Sure, as long as they left at the same same price. Same price yeah. for 25 years. And then after that, hey, congrats. You pay you you've you've paid on time. We're gonna reward you for being a good customer and never charge you for electricity again. Yeah. So when I asked that question, what did they subconsciously agree to? Basically locking in their price and saying, yeah, we'll go ahead and do this. They've, exactly, they've agreed to the concept of solar. Mm -hmm. And if people can think of the benefits of solar without hearing the word solar or getting triggered by it, everybody would do it. I am a firm believer that every homeowner in the United States, if they sat down with an open mind and truly compared the difference between renting their power from a utility company and owning it by owning their power, they would pick ownership over every single time. Now, here's where you just play with them. Here's where you downright just get dirty. Here's where you just, oh boy, let me, this is where you just really stick it to them, all right? Now, imagine five years, Richard, you've been locked into that plan. And then all of a sudden you hear a knock at the door. You look up and it's a utility company. Oh no, they're at the door. What do they want? They try to, they go, you answer the door and they try to persuade you to go back to the old plan where they could raise your rates whenever they wanted and the payment had no end date. What would you tell them in that situation? I tell them, no, man, no speak English, no. Ah, uh, no habla inglés. No. Exactly. So now, not only have you got them to agree to the idea of solar, but you've also got them to say, hey, my situation is so bad that if they came to me and tried to offer it to me again, I'd tell them to kick rocks or I didn't speak English. So did I tell them anything? No, they said it themselves. You said it. Yeah. Richard, you sold me, buddy. Hey, sign here. That's it. So that's the thing, guys is when you structure your presentation to ask questions and get them to answer them, you're gonna be in such a better position. I'd take a picture of that and write that down. That alone has made me a good amount of money. So that's the thing guys, is you have to engage with your client. You can't just sit there and just dull them with a presentation. You have to engage these guys. You have to ask them questions. You gotta get them to think. How many times you went through a long presentation, the customer says, I got to think about it. Raise your hand. Well, if I went through this, they already thought about it. They pictured the guy at the door. They pictured the guy at the door and they told him to kick rocks. So all these things are designed. If you come with the right headspace, you come with the right attitude, you start hitting these guys. That's really, really what it comes down to is really breaking that 
their preoccupation, getting them involved. Sales is an involvement sport. You got to get these guys involved. Get your clients talking, sharing stories. Because now I'm getting them to think about it. I'm painting a picture in their head. They know what's up now. Very, very key. So I want to open this up. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Let's start getting some questions you guys are doing right now. To, let me get out of here. Hold on. Did I get it done? All right. I stopped sharing, right? Okay. So what are some questions you guys are doing and you're asking your clients right now to get them to buy? What are you doing to get them to be okay with the concept of, of solar? Throw them out. There's no wrong answers here, guys. What are we communicating with our clients? Uh, I got one. Talk to me, Kurt. So, um, so a lot of times after I've gone through the numbers and I've kind of given the breakdown, uh, obviously, use the, the concept that many of us use where I say, you know, guys, why did you buy your house? Yep. And then they'll tell me all the reasons why they, why they bought their house. And I'll say, so prior to purchasing your house to own it, you guys were renting, right? And they go, yeah. And I'll say, okay, cool. That's pretty much the concept of solar. You're going from renting your power with a variable rate that's going to go up every year to actually, you know, owning your power, you know, with a fixed rate that you don't have to worry about going up. And then uh, my, my closing statement is, after everything you guys have seen here tonight, is there any reason you still want to pay the utility company? Mm. Money. Great. And if you've done a great job presenting and, and built enough pain points, they're like, no, absolutely not. Correct. So remember, so remember guys, when you're, when you're selling these clients, people buy for two reasons, because they love something or because it solves a problem. If they love solar, they already have it. So now your job is to bring enough pain points. Notice the questions how I ask was building pain in the grid. Most people bang on the utility companies and bash on them, but the utility companies is the middleman. They use the grid. It's not their fault. There's just an antiquated system. So I am on the side of the utility companies when I sell because I'm like, look, this is all they have. They can't do solar, it's a monopoly. So they, they, this is the only thing that they can sell you. So the thing is, there's nothing wrong with the utility company, they're just using an antiquated product. It's like taking a bus, no one does that anymore. You know, that was cool back in the day, but now, you know, everyone's got cars are so much more uh, cost effective. So the same thing is, is, you know, the grid is eventually gonna be obsolete. Everyone's gonna have, be able to generate their own power. Kurt, did you know that the sun has enough power that hits the planet Earth in one day that can power the whole world for a full year? No. So why are we digging up dinosaur bones to power the country? Stupid. Why? Mm -hmm. we, why what's the point? Like, guys, oh, who, oh, who is this little solar salesman? Hello there. He's a little Castro right there. Hello. That's Everly. Oh, hello, Everly. How are you doing? Yeah. Very cool. That's my youngest student right there. How are you? You ready to sell some solar? Yes. Oh, she's not. Oh, my goodness. Well, she's going to learn from that. She's going to take right. over the business. <laughs> yes. Well, watch this replay. It's got some good nuggets in there. So what else, guys? Start sharing. And like I said, this is, this is practice. If you're having a hard time engaging with me right now, you're going to have a hard time engaging with your clients. So if you're uncomfortable, practice now with me. Let's see what you got. Hey, David, <laughs> this is Dan. It was great meeting you as SolarCon partner. I really enjoyed your, uh, <laughs> your breakout. I agree with you, man. It's about, you know, creating those pain points as quickly as possible, right? So before I even get into the presentation, I'm trying to kill that bill. Uh, here in California, we have exuberant high cost. Uh, and so I start asking my, uh, my customers questions like, you know, do you know what a nuclear decommissioning fee is? Do you know what a transmission fee is? Do you know what a, a PPP is? And the customer's like, no, 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 no. And so what I'm doing is I'm building a case 
to kill that utility bill and to show them all those extra fees that are on their bill that are separate from a generation fee. And the customer's like, oh my God, I had no idea, right? So I, I then in return asked them, so what, if we, what, if, what would you do if we could get rid of all of these fees, lower your monthly bill, help you uh, produce clean energy? Would that make sense for you? Cool. Now, are you open to some feedback? Absolutely. So as you guys noticed, like you were 100% correct. You brought up the points and, and you asked the questions, but then you put it back on me. Remember, what are the three ways to get a, your point across to the customer? You tell them, the neighbors tell them, or they tell you. So a more powerful way to rephrase that last statement is use Pat. So reference Pat instead. So try that again. So instead of what would you do if we got rid of all of that? Now you say Pat. This is what Pat did when she got all of that and she was super happy. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And typically what I do is after I've explained that to my customer, I ask them to, in return, explain it back to me. Because when they hear themselves say it, it becomes yep. more impactful. Right. Yep. So, yeah, I completely agree with you. Perfect. I got some. All right, Anderson, talk to us. I didn't mean to cut in if you weren't done with my man, Dana. Dude, Dana's crushing. <laughs> I'm going to be just like Dana when I grow up. Handsome. I love so, it. Yes. Maybe a little more. Never mind. I won't go there. <laughs> um, so here in Arizona, if you're sitting with a senior and there's lots of seniors, they're going to be paying more because they're not qualifying for the uh, tax credit. Yeah. Um, so when I get to the monthly payment, I'll say something like this. George, do you remember the price of gasoline in 1999? If it's a senior citizen, they're like, oh, uh, I think around a dollar or 99 cents. And sometimes they say, I remember when it was four cents a gallon. You know, <laughs> they'll start talking about the price of gasoline and how it was. I said, well, yep. it was 99 cents in 1999. And if I could come to you and say, well, from now on, whenever you purchase gasoline, it's a dollar and 14 cents a gallon. You'll never go above that. Knowing what you know now, would you take that deal? Oh, heck yeah. Well, at the time, you would have been paying more. You would have been paying a dollar and 14 cents over 99 cents you'd still take that deal. Well, yeah, why would you do that? Well, I'd lock in that rate and it, it, would, it, would, it would stay there. So then I go back and I show them essentially effectively that's what we're doing here. Yes, you're paying $200 for your electricity right now. You're, uh, you will be paying about 225, but you're locking that in and we know where, where, where that's going. When I asked them about inflation, to, inflation too, Sometimes I'll throw this in. Now, you may disagree with me, but no, no, sorry, I say it like this. You may disagree with me, but my opinion is that uh, we're going to see a huge inflation numbers. Now, I'm with a lot of conservative elderly people, yeah. and they cut, they cut me off and they say, oh, no, it's going to be bad with the administration. We're going to see huge inflation. Have you seen it yet? Yeah. So those are some things that I'll, I'll do. So, and so here's one thing that I've found that works more fast. And that, those, dude, that, that's money. You, hey, you're going to be paying more, but it's worth it. So instead of you saying, hey, I think that inflation is going to go up, push it off to another customer that's in their similar situation. You know, Anna felt the same way. And you might agree with her. She felt that with inflation going up, it wasn't, it, it was going to only get worse. And with the current administration that's in office right now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. let them, let them rip. So throw let, that. guys, remember to, if you ever want to say how you feel, push it off to your last customer. If you want to bring up a point, Hey, Anna, you know what? I think you should, uh, uh, you know what, Anna, Christopher, the last customer I set up, he felt it was a really good way to get solar because of this. So whenever you catch yourself wanting to tell a customer something that you believe, push it off onto your last customer. Until you get good enough, think of one customer and use that customer every single time. Until you can start referencing different people, showing names, showing pictures, playing videos on your phone. 
Like when we start getting more advanced at this stuff, I'll play videos or testimonies with my customers that are similar situations to them and they're answering the customer's objections. The other question that I'll typically ask is I'll say, so you've seen gas prices go up. And I, the reason I bring gas prices is because power, your electricity will inflate at a more consistent rate than gasoline. Now, when gas prices go up, you have seen them go down, right? Have yeah. you ever seen your electricity bill go up and then come back down? Yeah. What typically happens when your electricity bill gets a hike, rate? Right? You get to keep that the rest of your life. Money. That's good. Yeah, you know, gas or, prices go up. Huh? Perfect. Dude, great. So guys, see that. Creative selling. Vincent, you got one before we wrap it up? Yeah, yeah, I've got a, uh, I've got a question. Would it be wise to take testimonials? Uh, it's like, you know, we've got personal business cards and we get the customer's name, what have you, and give them to give a handwritten statement as to why they made the decision to go solar? Would that be a wise thing to do? A hundred percent if you're doing in person. If you're doing it over, uh, if you're doing it virtual, it comes off as gimmicky. You're like, oh, right. you had that sitting here right there with testimony from <laughs> old Frank? Yeah, all right, bud. Yeah, no, I always, in person, I would bring stacks of cards and just <clears throat> that. And then, and then eventually the video testimony thing took over. I would just play video after video, like, Right here, we're sitting here. I pull it up for you in less than 30 seconds. It's under my favorites. Boom, right here. Already done. Playing. I'll play it for you guys right now, just so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm here right now. I want you to introduce yourself, sir. Arzell Hale. Mr. Hale, what what, what do you got, you got in your house? I've got 30 solar panels on my house. Man, so what was the main reason why you got those panels? Because of the expense. Because I couldn't have a AC unit in Toronto because my bill would have been probably 700 a month. And now I don't pay any electric bill. Plus, I've already got $350 credit built up in the grid. And I'll probably have $700 by the end of the year. Wow. So, so, you okay. know, guys like, like that. <clears throat> that's my next question is this in, in mississippi there are a lot of customers that have what's called budget billing because we have a few months in the year where your ac doesn't run a few months in the year where like my house has got uh 15 tons in it so i've got three five ton units so some months my electricity bill is through the roof and then yeah. during the um the winter time i've got natural gas so then of course my natural gas expenses are higher so um with that a lot of people are going on what's called levelized billing. So yeah. you get a levelized bill, but here's what I've always found, uh, historically found over that over the last 10 years. Every year my leveled billing is uh, $30 more a month than it was the year before, and then it goes up to 50. So now I'm you know, leveled billing at 285 or 325 you know, per month for the next year, but the, the year following that is 10 to $15 higher. So would that be a, a good selling point? Um, you know, people in different parts of the country uh, use less um, AC units during certain parts of the year than what we have to use here in the South. We've got like yeah. nine months of 80 degrees, 85, 90 degrees with um, yeah. 75 to 80% humidity. So you have to sensibly run your air. Um, yeah. Even in even in the, in the winter months, some days you have your, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. In January, I had probably, you know, 20 days when I was running, you know, the heater in the fireplace, there were 10 days I had to turn the AC on yeah. because of my, you know, geographical location. So would that be a good selling point uh, as far as levelized billing? Because that's one of the things that I think may be a contingency with people say, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm tapped out at 225 or whatever the number is on my financing plan, but I've yeah. got months where I don't pay that much. Yeah. And then I've got months where I pay in excess. Yeah. So, so for the sake of time, I want to make sure I jam on this with you. It's you got to look at this, Mr. Customer, as a deferred payment plan for 25 years locked in. Because as you know, even though they might lock this in for a year, next year you're going to feel it. And unfortunately, I can't go back, come back three years from now when I'm saving you a bunch of money. So we are going to have to spend a little bit more now, but it's worth it to do it now instead of waiting till three years comes and then the tax credit goes away and it's not as incentivizing for you. So for me, that's what I would say is, is bite the bullet now, get it over with, because you realize in the long term, it's going to save you more money rather than just saving you a bunch of money right this second. So 
At the end of the day, that's what I would tell you. So, so dive into that and explain this is a 25 year locked in payment, not just a yearly. Because every year that's going to go up. This is lifetime. And it might be a little bit more now, but next year, what are you going to tell them? Hey, I can't afford that anymore. So what, you're just going to stop paying your electricity bill? You're going to go to candles? So with that being said, guys, I am so thankful you freaking let me come in here and share. And Anthony, you're the man. I'm sorry I have to run, but I'd love to do this again. I, I think uh, uh, Power, um, what's the big event Power coming World. up? Power World. Power World. Power World. So we're I'm I'm working with the owners right now to get uh speaking at Power World. So I hope to see you guys there. And everyone can follow me on Instagram. Hit me up. Uh, I've got a lot of really good content that can help you guys sell. And like I said, man, um, you guys freaking rock. Let the utility companies have it and uh, use that stuff I shared. And if you liked it, please write me a testimony on Instagram on your story. You know that'd be awesome. And then if you don't have Instagram, go to my Facebook. It's called Knockstar. Anthony can help get you guys to it if you have questions. I'm all there. Yes, you guys rock. Appreciate you, Danny. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you.